Good morning. Uh, these few verses that I have to preach on are possibly some of the hardest I've ever had to preach on, uh, ever. It's, they're a little bit like trying to prove Vermat's last theorem or uh, climbing the north face of the Eiger, not for the faint-hearted. That's because Paul is here really summarising all his arguments between Romans 9 and 11, and scholars really still have a lot of debate about what exactly Paul is saying about the Jewish people in these verses. And I think it would honestly be a mistake for me to try and explain what I think about it. Um, far better to really enjoy and meditate on some of the real jewels in this text, and there are jewels. You know, Paul talks about the people whom he foreknew uh, in, in Romans 11, 1, uh, in Romans 11, 1 and 2, those whom he foreknew. Uh, and uh, that's been quite problematic in Romans 9 because Paul's been talking about uh, predestination in the context of judgment with some uh, spending eternity with God and some spending eternity outside his presence. Uh, but actually, it is one of the greatest comforts in our Christian life to know that when we walk through that door that says uh, salvation comes through faith alone and we close it behind us, uh, that we see on the other side is written and by it, but faith comes through grace. In other words, salvation is this extraordinary gift from our Heavenly Father. And in some way, as we look back, we can see how he planned all along from the beginning of our lives for us to be with him. You know, Psalm 139, what does it say? Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You uh, are familiar with all my ways. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. Now, if you've been married for some time, you might feel that uh, sometimes your spouse knows what you're going to say before you say it. Uh, but of course, there is only one person in this whole universe who really does know exactly what we're going to say and exactly what we are thinking. And the great comfort that we can draw from that psalm and through from all these passages that talk about how well God knows us and how he foreknew us is that he just knows us so, so well and he loves us so, so much. And then in Ephesians 1, it takes it even further, doesn't it? It talks about the future hope uh, that, uh, that those whom God has predestined to be made in the image or remade in the image of his precious children, that we're all called to be children of the living God. And that is our end, if you like. It's a great comfort, isn't it? Because we all know that the future can be rather ugly and murky. And as we know through our present times, it can be extremely difficult. It's such a comfort to know that God will be there. It's a little bit like Corrie ten Boom talking about uh, with her father. You know, he said to her, you know, when, when I'm at the station, Corrie, <clears throat> when do I give you the ticket? And she said, well, before we get on the train, Papa. And he said, well, God's just the same. He knows the problems in our lives that we're going to face. And before we face them, he gives us the strength in that moment to be able to be like him, to be able to face them with the courage and the fortitude that he has. God is so so good. And what's so great about this text actually is that the context of it is that Paul is talking here about the people of Israel. He's actually saying, you know, has God, the people of Israel have rejected God, has God rejected them? And his answer is, by no means. You know, he hasn't rejected his people even though they've walked away from him and uh, just rejected the Messiah. He hasn't rejected them. That's so good, isn't it? Because however wrong we get it, we can know that God still has a plan. 
And the truth is about the Christian journey is we really can get it so wrong. I think one of the biggest mistakes we can make is to think that somehow we're above sin. Uh, and we do do that in rather sort of uh, rather covert ways deep in our hearts. We can become just like Adam and Eve. We hide from our sins. We pretend they're not there. And yet sometimes, and slowly and inexorably, they do have an awful habit of catching us up. Do you know something? We take ourselves far too seriously. God is calling us to be like children because we are his children. And God, Paul here is talking to the, uh, the, 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 the Gentile Christians particularly. He's saying, you know, those people of Israel, they're, they're your enemies at the moment. They're your enemies at the moment for, for the gospel. But in God's sight, they're beloved because of the patriarchs. You know, do you have an enemy? Has someone done something awful to you? God will see them differently to the way that you see them. And one of the ways of walking across that very difficult bridge called forgiveness is to ask God, when we feel ready, how he does see our enemies. As, as Paul says, for the gift and calling of God are irrevocable. Not only does God see our enemies differently, quite often he actually has plans for them too. And they can sometimes include us because we're all his children and he loves us all more than we can ever imagine. And that brings me on to the last sort of golden nugget from this text. You know, it talks about the way that God has handed all over to disobedience so he can be merciful to all. Now, what Paul is not saying here is that God is going to be merciful to every person who's ever been. That's what's known as universalism. And Paul's not actually saying that. If you read the rest of his, his epistles, he's, he's really not saying that everyone's going to be saved. But what he is saying is that as, just as the, the Gentiles were originally disobedient, it was through the Jews' disobedience that salvation came to the Gentiles. And now the Jews are being disobedient, it's through the mercy that the, the Gentiles are, have received because of the Jews' disobedience that God's mercy is going to come to the Jews. In other words, we are all disobedient before God. And we are all saved by this incredible word, which is called grace. You know, we are just like children. We really do have the capacity to get it wrong. We do take ourselves far too seriously. And we don't realise our incredible need for God's love, his mercy, his power and his presence all the way through our lives. Everything we have on this earth that is worth anything is because of his grace. All, as Julian of Norwich said, all is grace. And uh, I, 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 one of my favourite stories, and I know I've probably told this a bit too much, but it is still one of my favourite stories about just how God sees us, our best attempts to serve him. Uh, it was told by Christy Wimber when she was, uh, one of her children at age three was helping her with the shopping. <laughs> He insisted on helping her bring the shopping in and uh, apparently I think he sort of dropped the milk. That was almost the first thing that went and then there was some sort of valuable plant pot that sort of was smashed and uh, rice went everywhere and it just sort of went from bad to worse really. But Chrissy all along was trying to encourage him and was actually really pleased that her son had wanted to help his mum and could see that he was just trying and as she was thinking these this mixture of emotions and sort of slight irritation perhaps uh, having to go back to the shop and get some of the stuff she'd already bought uh, she just had this real sense of her heavenly father say you know Christy that's just how I see you <laughs> you know you may see this incredible ministry but I just see a kid who's just doing her best to serve me and who gets it wrong all the time but just like you are with your son I am with you you know I am so proud of the way you try 
one of the uh, images that God has been bringing back to me over the last few weeks is of a balloon. Uh, a balloon sailing into the air. Uh, uh, we did have an image once of the balloon being tethered as a church. You know, it was sort of tethered to the ground. I think we have uh, faced all sorts of uh, challenges and issues over the last few weeks and months, over the last few years perhaps as a church. And yet I, I, I am very profoundly uh, excited about what God has planned for us. I do feel that this is going to be a time when we, just like that proverbial balloon, we're going to be floating on air that God has got plans for us. They are good plans for us. And they're plans to bless us. You know, God wants to know you better than he's ever known you before. He wants you to encounter him in a way that you've never known before. He has that for each one of us. But God also wants to use us to bless our community because just as we are his children and as we learn to receive more and more of the Holy Spirit he blesses us so he wants to bless all those wayward and difficult children that there are out in our community. God bless you today. Know that the biggest mistake you could make is to think that God's love is not bigger <laughs> than your mistakes and remember that you are his special child and that he takes great delight in you.